This kind of creepy palette is one of the most important Egyptian artifacts and after the intro I'm going to tell you its compelling story. Hi everyone and welcome back to Exploring Art, this is Alessandro. In the previous video we started a new series about ancient Egyptian art. By the way, if you missed the episode, you can find the link over here and in the description, but don't forget to subscribe. Today we are going to read a very significant and still enigmatic artifact, the palette of King Narmer. Dated around the 31st century BC, it contains some of the earliest hieroglyphic inscriptions ever found, made on a 63 cm tall or 2 feet, shield-shaped cosmetic ceremonial palette, carved from a single piece of flat, soft, dark, grey-green siltstone. Among all the stuff I just said, probably you're wondering cosmetic ceremonial palette? Yes. Let me explain why this object is incredibly important even if you are not a makeup artist. And I suggest you to watch it full screen so you can leave a better immersion. The palette was discovered by two British archaeologists in what they called the main deposit in the Temple of Horus at Necken in 1897-98. It has been suggested to be a royal donation made to the temple since the object itself is a monumental and very elaborate version of a type of daily use palette used for grinding and mixing cosmetics. Palettes were generally smaller, flat, and minimally decorated, but these larger and decorated ones were used in temple ceremonies. Narmer's palette is one of the finest and oldest examples and it doesn't surprise to be found in Necken or Hierakompolis, since it was one of the four power centers in Upper Egypt. Back to the 31st century BC, the time of our palette, Egypt was divided in Upper, Southern and Lower, Northern. And just after the unification, the dynastic period started making Egypt a powerful and flourishing reign. And here is where our story starts. The palette, carved in raised relief, in fact depicts King Narmer on both sides in two ambiguous scenes. Ambiguity given, not only but also since on one side he is wearing the bold white crown of Upper Egypt and on the other side the red crown of Lower Egypt. On both sides, the king is represented in human form, but of course in a hierarchical scale, followed by his sandal bearer. He's literally a sandal bearer. We know for sure it's King Narmer since on the top of the palette on both sides are the central serex, bearing the symbols NR, catfish, and MR, chisel, phonetic representation of Narmer's name. In the front, the king holds a mace and a flail, two traditional symbols of kingship, and he's wearing the red crown of Lower Egypt. To his right are the hieroglyphic symbols for his name, thought not contained within a serek. Behind him, also his sandal bearer's name may be represented by the rosette appearing adjacent to his head. Immediately before the pharaoh, there are a priest and four standard bearers. At the far right of this scene are ten decapitated corpses, with heads at their feet, possibly symbolizing the victims of Narmer's conquest. Below the procession, two men are holding ropes tied to the intertwining necks of two serpoparts. The serpopart is a mythological creature, a leopard with long snaky neck. The circle formed by their curving neck is the area where the cosmetics would have been ground. At the bottom of the pallet, a bull is knocking down the walls of a city while trampling on a fallen foe. The bull could represent the king since often the pharaoh is referred to as strong bull. The back of the pallet is clearly dominated by Narmer who is going to kill with a maze a defeated enemy. Above the prisoner, a falcon, representing Horus, perched above a set of papyrus flowers, the symbol of Lower Egypt. Horus is holding a rope attached to a man's head emerging from a marsh, another symbol of Lower Egypt, however the meaning is still mysterious. What is clear is that on the back the king is wearing the white crown of Upper Egypt. Because he is wearing the two crowns, this is the first example where both are used by the same ruler, the main interpretation seems to be that the tablet represents the unification of Upper and Lower Egypt, happened thanks to the king Narmer who defeated his enemies. 
More recent interpretations suggest that the palette represents the balance between order and chaos, a fundamental element of the Egyptian idea of the cosmos, or even the daily journey of the sun god. I think the opportunity to read the palette in different ways is very fascinating and another example of how much we still need to understand from this amazing culture. But the palette of King Narmer was, and so is for us, really important because it's one of the first works of art filled with iconographic features that are going to remain conventional for 3000 years, like the two-dimensional and profile figures, the scene organized in horizontal zones known as registers, uh, the hierarchical scale, the symbols, and we are going to see them in the next episodes. Leave your comments and please share the video. Ciao!